A parliamentary committee says that gambling ads should be banned in three years to help with the addiction problem. People are asking the federal government to ban gambling ads during sporting events within three years. Australia is in the middle of a disaster that threatens the finances and mental health of many people. The harms of online gambling were looked into by a parliamentary group, and their findings are now out in the open. The committee came up with 31 ideas for how to control the business and help addicts in Australia. One of them is a plan to ban, over the course of three years, all advertising that leads people to websites and apps where they can bet. The government also wants to watch the business more closely. Then I lost. I lost our savings and the car. Couldn't even drive the family to the beach. God, I needed another decent win. Did I get it? I ended up owing four grand on the credit card. I'm sorry, it doesn't seem to be going... They cancelled it. Shelly couldn't even pay for the groceries. She went right off. People don't like it because they feel like they're getting too much advertising, and they're very worried that kids are always seeing ads for sports betting, said Labor MP Peter Murphy, who is in charge of the committee. I worry that we're making, if we haven't already, another generation of Australians who think that sports and betting go together and that sports are almost a way for betting to happen. Miss Murphy said that Australians are some of the worst gamblers in the world. She also said that past efforts to control gambling ads had not helped solve the problem. At the moment, gambling ads can't be shown within five minutes of the start or end of a sporting event. There are some exceptions, like when soccer and tennis games take breaks, but only after 8.30 p.m. During these times, betting companies can also have a spokesperson talk about betting odds, as long as that person is not at the sports venue where the event is happening and is clearly not part of the event commentary team. Miss Murphy said, the rules that were put in place caused advertising outside of those times to grow by a factor of 10. It's true that Australians think there's more advertising. So, the committee heard proof that changing things here and there won't have the good effect that was hoped for. Instead, there needs to be a total ban on them. Nielsen Research says that the gambling business spent $310 million on advertising in 2022. Miss Murphy said that stopping gambling advertising slowly would give broadcasters and sports leagues time to find other ways to make money and give betting companies time to adapt to the new rules. She said, we also heard from the AFL and NRL about how much they depend on sponsorship deals with betting companies. That's why we have proposed a step-by-step -step plan. When advertising for tobacco was stopped, for example, we learned that there are steps to take in ways to make up for any bad affects. But in the end, everyone on the group agreed that this is a public health problem that needs to be fixed. The government plan for gambling had to take into account collective responsibility. Miss Murphy said that during the investigation, the committee heard heartbreaking stories from people who had struggled because they were addicted to online gambling. This made the group want a national plan for gambling to be made. Instead of saying it's up to each person to not gamble in a way that hurts themselves or others, it's recognizing that there is a collective responsibility and a public health issue, she argued. We need to get rid of some of the shame and blame that people feel so we can help them get help. Both prevention and healing need to be at the center of a national plan. Education, early intervention, steps that make it easier for people to stop gambling when it's hurting them, and steps that make it harder for people to bet in ways that hurt them are all ways to prevent problem gambling. Calls for the government to watch the gambling business more closely. Miss Murphy said that control of online gambling across the country was piecemeal, pointing out that a number of betting companies had registered their operations in the Northern Territory. She said, online gambling should be regulated by the government at the national level. At the moment, each state is in charge of online gambling. The central government helps in some ways through the Broadcasting Act. In some ways, the person in charge is now the Northern Territory Racing Commissioner. It has something to do with how much a pass costs and how the government keeps an eye on things. One could say that the Northern Territory won the race to get most of the providers licensed there, and we heard some worries about whether or not the governing system is strong enough. A national watchdog was also suggested by the group. That means that people with complaints can easily find a place to go to have them looked at, looked into, and solved, Miss Murphy said. Politics get involved when ads for gambling are banned. 
In May, Peter Dutton, the leader of the opposition, suggested that gaming ads be banned for one hour before and after sports games. It comes to gambling, uh, you know, this is not paper money, it's, it's not a theory, it's people's hard-earned cash, people are drawing money out of their credit card uh, to put onto their gambling account. And in moderation, like anything, uh, gambling is uh, something that, that, that a lot of Australians enjoy, and I don't begrudge that. Uh, my concern is when you've got a constant bombardment and a normalisation of these betting ads, uh, conversations with your kids about, you know, whether uh, somebody scored a try and there's X points. The coalition tried to make the change happen by putting forwards a bill. Even though it was unlikely that the proposed law would get enough support in federal parliament, it has forced the government to tighten rules. Prime Minister Anthony Albanese didn't like the idea and said that the coalition had been uncertain about it while they were in charge. Labor changed the endings of ads that said gamble responsibly to say things like chances are you're about to lose and what's gambling really costing you. Later this year, it plans to pass a law to close a loophole that lets people use their credit cards to bet online. When reporters asked officials about gambling reform, they would say that any changes would have to wait until the group looking into the problem gave a report to Parliament.